About two years ago, I published a video describing how I was using a RedNet3 digital audio interface in my studio to provide a link between my DAW and my analog to digital converters, outboard effects and processors, and a digital mixer. Since that time, I've been presenting the theory videos for Project Studio Handbook, much of which is filmed in my studio. Although primarily focused on producing theory videos, Project Studio Handbook also produces the occasional video on a specific piece of gear, and I suggested that the RedNet 3 would make a good subject. So here is an expanded and updated video, including an evaluation of current audio interface technologies and a detailed case study of how I am now using RedNet 3 in my studio. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to our Focusrite RedNet3 case study. In this video, we will review the primary technologies for connecting an audio interface to a computer. We'll discuss audio over IP audio interfaces and suggest why they can be a viable alternative to conventional PCIe, Firewire, USB and Thunderbolt connected devices. Then we will look at a case study of how RedNet3 is being used in a project studio. This video is being filmed in October 2015 and at this time there are five primary interconnection protocols for connecting an audio interface to a computer. They are Firewire, PCIe expansion cards, USB 2 and 3, Thunderbolt and Ethernet. All of these technologies are established and work well, but there are some important facts to consider when deciding between them. Firewire is a long-serving technology developed by Apple to facilitate the transfer of DV format video files between a DV camcorder and a computer editing system. It was adopted by audio interface manufacturers as a superior format to USB 1, but despite an update from 400 to 800 megabits per second, has since been surpassed in performance by USB 2, Thunderbolt and Ethernet. The biggest current problem with Firewire is that current Macs and PCs are not sold with Firewire ports, thus necessitating the addition of a PCIe expansion card. This presents a second problem if you are running your door software on a laptop, iMac or the latest Mac Pro, none of which accept PCIe cards. There are also question marks over how long manufacturers will support the Firewire protocol in software. Because they can be integrated so closely with a host computer, PCIe audio interface sound cards have the potential to offer minimal latency and great performance for getting audio in and out of a door. But as fewer and fewer computers can accommodate them, the PCIe protocol looks less and less like a technology worth investing in. However, Avid, RME and Universal Audio all have high performance professional audio ecosystems that leverage PCIe, perhaps because efficiency is not subject to the operating system overheads that USB and Firewire impose. Because most computers come equipped with USB 2 and many with USB 3 ports too, audio interfaces that use this protocol would seem a good choice, offering good performance and value for money. But USB was never intended for audio, does not always prioritise audio data and can impose significant restrictions on acceptable performance and reliability. However, Microsoft's support for audio in Windows 10 has improved and it looks unlikely that Thunderbolt will replace USB anytime soon. Thunderbolt is a next generation interconnect, typically offering 20 gigabits per second performance. Despite its obvious performance advantages, Thunderbolt has so far failed to replace USB as the de facto interconnect protocol for high data throughput devices such as audio interfaces and external hard drives, especially on PCs. This is partly explained by its expense and the improvements in speed offered by the more cost-effective USB 3, which can deliver 5 gigabits per second 
more than enough for the average project studio. The majority of PCIe, Firewire and USB connected devices rely on driver software developed by their manufacturers. Whenever a new operating system is released, drivers must be retested for compatibility and more often than not rewritten. This is not a trivial undertaking and many manufacturers simply stop supporting older models, thereby rendering an audio interface unusable. This is a concern if you want to maintain a device for an extended period of time. One disadvantage of all the interconnect protocols discussed so far is that they support relatively short cable lengths and therefore must be sighted within a few meters of a host door computer. Surprisingly, it turns out that one of the oldest and most enduring computer interconnect technologies, Ethernet, is not only capable of high quality and high speed audio data transmission, but can do so over very long distances of many hundreds of meters at very low cost using standard CAT6 cables. This is of particular interest for live sound applications where implementing conventional analog or AES or MADI digital connections can be bulky and expensive. All that was required was for an audio transmission protocol to be developed and widely adopted by competing manufacturers the way MIDI was in the 1980s. Such systems began to emerge around the beginning of the century and the current leader is Ordinate's Dante Protocol. Dante is now a well-established protocol in live sound and Focusrite's RedNet devices have introduced it into the studio. Dante permits the transmission of up to 1024 audio channels running at up to 32-bit 192 kHz down a single Cat6 Ethernet cable. For project and home studio owners this kind of performance is unnecessary but as we shall see the RedNet 3 offers a number of other advantages over the alternatives. The RedNet 3 acts as a bridge between a door computer and outboard digital devices. You can think of it as a 32 channel digital hub. It offers audio connections on 8 Toslink optical I.O. ports which can accommodate 2 channel SPDIF or 8 channel ADAT light pipe signals a single stereo SPDIF coaxial I.O. connection, eight channels of AES-3 I.O. via a D-sub connector, and word clock. It is suitable for situations where a diverse range of digital hardware needs to be interconnected. The type of devices a project studio owner might typically connect are digital monitor controllers, analog to digital converters, digital outboard effects processors, mic channel strips with digital outputs, two track recorders such as CD or DAT and digital mixers. The primary advantages over PCIe, Firewire, USB and Thunderbolt are Dante is an established protocol and Ordinate have a committed track record of ensuring it is compatible with new operating systems. Because the protocol is not tied to a single product, this should ensure a long operational life for devices that support the Dante protocol, such as RedNet. RedNet 3 is the most affordable in the range and although it may seem a lot to pay for a device without built-in A to D conversion or mic pre's, it should more than pay for itself over time. Although Focusrite claim the lowest latencies can only be achieved with a bespoke and optional RedNet PCIe Ethernet card, you can use RedNet 3 with any Ethernet enabled computer and still achieve acceptable latencies with a buffer size of 64 samples or less depending on host computer CPU performance. You can happily change and update any of your connected devices, secure in the knowledge that they will always connect successfully to your door. You can position a RedNet device away from your door and connect it with standard and cheap CAT6 cables. And a RedNet system is scalable, so you can add additional devices to it. So, here we are in the studio and you'll notice that there is a lot of analog and digital hardware here. 
over the past 10 years, people have been switching to plugins and selling hardware for silly money, and some of it has ended up here. Plugins are, of course, super convenient, but uh, many of us hate editing with a mouse, like the sound of hardware, and also have a nostalgic or creative relationship with particular pieces of gear. However, these devices present a problem. How do you integrate them into a door workflow? So let's describe this setup. In this studio, the RedNet is situated away from the door and in the same rack as the patch bays and outboard. It is connected via a single Cat6 Ethernet cable to the door computer. Remember, it can handle 32 bi-directional channels of I.O. The following devices are connected to the RedNet's AES3 connections. The digital two-channel output of a Focusrite ISA430 mic channel strip. The digital single-channel output of a Focusrite liquid channel. The digital stereo I.O. of a Lexicon PCM91, which is integrated with the door via an I.O. plugin. And the digital stereo I.O. of a TC Electronic M3000, which is also integrated with the door via an I.O. plugin. In this studio, all other analog and digital outboard is connected to patch bays via balanced analog cables, as are the analog connections for the Focusrite ISA430 and Liquid Channel. Two RME 8-channel converters connect digitally to the Redneck via ADAT Toslink and also to the patch bay via balanced analog cables. Therefore, any outboard device can be connected to the door by patching it into a converter and inserting an I.O. plug-in in the door. This includes mic pre's, EQs, compressors and effects processors. A digital mixer is connected to the RedNet via an 8-channel ADAT I.O. link. The first two channels coming into the mixer carry the stereo master mix output from the door. The stereo monitor output of the mixer is connected to a monitor controller and hence to the monitors. All the synths and keyboards are connected directly via analog cables to the mixer. The audio output from any of them can be recorded directly to the door or they can run live via MIDI alongside the stereo master mix output from the door. Because the ISA430 and Liquid channels have both digital and analog outputs, it is possible to disable software monitoring in the door, connect their analog outputs to the mixer and monitor live performers direct and latency free during recording. Using a mic splitter, we can do the same with other mic pre's, sending one signal to a converter and the other to the mixer. The final connections involve sending word clock signals from the RedNet 3 to the ISA430 and Liquid Channel. This is because their AES connections are one way only. Take it down 
So, that's the end of this video. Just a couple of final thoughts. The equipment in this studio has been collected over a period of 35 years, bit by bit. More than half of it is second hand. In the last 20 years, the studio has had new bus, PCI, USB and Firewire audio interfaces. No doubt some of the equipment you see here will be traded or replaced in the coming years, but we predict the Redneck 3 will still be here in 10 years time. If it is, perhaps we'll do another video. But until then, we hope you found this video interesting and useful, and thanks for watching. The script for this tutorial, along with accompanying images, can be found at our website, projectstudiohandbook.com. We suggest you subscribe at our YouTube channel and join our mailing list at our website to receive notification of new videos, blog posts and subscriber-only extras. Thanks for watching. Oh, no.